Got this tuna. It's a big tuna. It's a big ass tuna. This thing is huge. We're gonna paint it. So this thing is way too big to put in helping hands, clearly. Um, there's just no way. It's heavy. I'm not sure how heavy. Maybe we should weigh it. It's upright. That's good. It's a big ass tuna. So the ballast is fairly decent. I don't know that I mean, maybe you would be able to put it on a trolling line, do something with that. Um, more than anything else, this is probably just for decoration. I seriously don't know if this would um, be fishable, but it's cool as hell. Um, pros and cons. It swims upright, so it's ballasted okay. Uh, it's got a hard fin on the top, which could break off because this thing is so heavy. It's Two pounds, two ounces, something like that. Two pounds, 2.9 ounces. I don't know. It's big. It's heavy. Um, this, I like the fact for something this size that it's on fabric and not on joints and pens because that would snap easier. So they've got it fabriced through. Looks like probably one piece that's just been pressed together looks like the seams were filled pretty well the mold was okay um, we are going to sand this a little bit and prime it and then paint it I've got it dried off so the first step is going to be some light sanding just going to do an up to scuff Plastic usually will adhere to paint and primer pretty easily, a lot easier than some resins will. And if this is just going to be for show, which I think it is, um, it shouldn't be too bad. I just want to kind of scuff it enough to give it a little texture. And because there's nothing that I own that would hold this in place upright, we're going to do it one side at a time. And there's some tricks to, to go along with that. Um, you can pretty much gauge from these side fins. If you look at a pattern that's a tuna, and in this particular, a blue or yellow fin tuna, um, they have a lot of white in their belly and some pearl, a little bit of pink, and then they've got a line, which is like some deep blues and really cool color shifts we're going to use on this and just have some fun with it. And the back. And again, just enough to scuff it. I'm not super, super worried about adhesion. I think we'll be okay with this. The biggest thing is gonna be lining up the sides to make them match fairly well and making sure one side's dry before I put it on the other side of the paint. Respirator is on for this. Um, our fan is down upstairs in the clear coat room, so I'm going to have to prime it down here. Have to use a fan. going to put my respirator on for this one. I'm going to be trying this Duplicolor primer. It's an automotive series. It's a filler. It's uh, a little bit less expensive than some of the other ones. I have not used it before, and this is a perfect type of a bait to try it out on. If you can hear me, you have a respirator on, you always want to point it away from you and you want to point it towards the fan if you can. I would not do more than one here, so what I've been doing while our fan's been down and we got to repair it, get a new one, I've been doing one at a time down here, and then after everybody leaves, I go upstairs with my respirator and time back and all that stuff, and I'll do the rest of them up there. But for now, we're going to do this. even strokes start before it and after it don't stop in the middle because you'll get a glob
I'm going to have to let one side dry before I can do the other. And just nice even coats. about 10 minutes it's mostly dry to the touch but it's a little bit tacky so we're going to give it about 10 more minutes this stuff is supposed to dry really really fast so far it does um, I usually like to let it dry naturally I'm not going to heat set primer the way I would when I say heat set basically everybody knows it's just the air but warm air does help um, helps a little bit quicker uh, process that paint and get it dry but we don't do that with primer uh, so I'm just going to let it gas out and uh, come back in about five, maybe five, ten more minutes. We should be ready to paint it. And I'm going to use, I'm not going to, I'm going to pull this up so that I don't get any primer residue because residue from primer is real dusty and has a tendency to stick to everything much more than aerosolized paint does. All right, guys, the first thing that we're going to do today is get a white base on here. all the way up. In order to give it some depth, and to recognize that tuna are extremely flashy in the water, we're going to add just a little bit of chrome paint. Just to kind of feather in a little bit of depth. If you use an alcohol or metallic paint on top of a regular paint, make sure that your regular paint or whatever is underneath of the chrome is completely dry. Otherwise, you're going to have a big problem as far as its ability to dry or be clear coated. This is just a little Art Tools Mini FX. There should be a link in the description, but if there's not, holler at me. I'll help you get it. I don't know if you're really able to notice what I'm doing here, but I'm kind of making a line in this chrome just above where this fence going to be. So I've pulled this paper down closer. I don't know if you can see right where the lateral line would be. I've kind of made a little bit of an indentation or at least a shadow. And we're going to do that on the other side too. So it should come right from this part of the tail in the middle and the lateral line just above this pec fin into the face. And that's, if you do that on both sides, that's gonna give you consistency. And it's gonna help out a good bit on the back end of things. So we've got this down. The next thing we're going to do is, it's, I'm going to do one side at a time, so you guys are going to see a finished side before I flip it. Um, if you do, if you have to do stuff like this, or if you have to do large things that you can really only do one side at a time for, like helping hands would be completely useless on something like this. Um, even if, if you have a cradle, 
this is just easier for me but if you do stuff one side at a time and you need to remember you're having a hard time figuring out the order of things write it down no harm no foul so this is the first time I'm giving you guys a top down if you like this viewpoint and you can hear me because I don't have I'm not mic'd up so this is just me working with what I have in the studio right now um, and not the GoPro because the GoPro I just I don't know we're gonna try something new how's that new for the holidays um, if this is a view that you guys like seeing then I'm gonna continue to do this because it's pretty cool not to have to worry about whether I'm getting splatter back on the phone or on the cameras or on the GoPros and it gives you a pretty good view I think the lighting's okay we'll check that in post-production but um, yeah let's uh, let's kind of go with this so I've decided for the for the concept of teaching that I'm gonna kick this fan off because I've got the camera right above where the fan is and it's probably really loud and it's not gonna make any sense because I'm gonna be speaking down towards the fish which is normally where my GoPro is but I'm just trying to figure out logistics for you guys so just because we're doing one fish um, not a whole run of things I am NOT wearing my respirator and I do not have the fan on but that's the extent so once all of this goes away and we produce then I go back into paint mode and all of that goes back on so please make sure wear your respirator and use a fan so I've got just a little bit of wicked deep blue left and to that I'm going to add a little bit of a reducer because I yeah I just don't have a whole lot left of it I need to reorder it um, a lot of you guys ask me in different formats about how much I spend in replenishing paint so on a monthly basis I spend about four or five hundred dollars um, that's the, the workload that I have and it's not always big stuff like this although the bigger the, the more colors that I use a lot of I do get bigger bottles because it's just more economical but like stuff that I use once in a while I don't use a whole lot of deep blue and stuff anymore um, it's a little bit less so depends on what my needs are I shop at Blick I shop Amazon I just try to get the best deal wherever I can the thing with Amazon that you have to worry about though is how long it's been sitting in their warehouse there are certain things that I would recommend um, certain things like hard tools like this where it just doesn't matter um, but for paints and stuff you really have to be careful and we've also found with certain clear coats that we get from Amazon um, we don't do that anymore because they just have a tendency to be sitting around the warehouses for too long a period of time for me to actually put my name behind um, signing off on selling you that from there so just be careful um, if you want a list of stuff there's a video that I did a couple of years back that's pretty good about where I get what things from and I can re recycle that video or drop the link there for you too so I've got a little reducer in this wicked deep blue I have a transparent medium gray that I'm going to be using on this I already showed you the chrome and it's really good chrome I'm using it okay so you guys have asked which chromes and what I'm doing so there's a couple that I like right now one is crink one is spastics this is a little more expensive than this they're both fairly expensive in the way of chromes as that goes and then for larger projects we bring out the big guns this is a Montana this is an Italian loop pro writing but works very well for this stuff too so I've got just a little bit of the medium gray in here and I'm gonna just make some random bruising patterns freeform I'm not going to use any kind of a stencil one back by the tail and I'm gonna randomize that on the other side too so again you don't need to pay real particular attention to where you lay this down on the fish just get some some basic bruising in there and you're gonna be covering a lot of this so and then I'm also gonna darken this eye just where the eye is and as we go through this video today you are gonna hear other people in the shop this is a working shop we're at Bullshed Swim Baits as always that's where my shop is located these days 
So I have no problem when other people come through and they need to conduct business because they have to do that. So if you guys hear other people in the video today, it's totally cool. Put a few drops of this injury ochre yellow. It's like a mustard color in here. And I'm gonna just flip this upside down. Well, for me, not for you guys. You'll still see it pretty well. And I'm gonna add a yellow line into this. Using the same stencil that we used with the chrome, I'm following roughly the same line, just a little bit higher up as we go. And then just come back and feather in lighter, a little bit further up, just to give it a little bit more definition. And then just, I'm gonna come to just past the inside of that eye. And to this ochre yellow, I've got just a little bit of Liquitex gold, and I'm gonna kind of spray that behind it and just a little bit above it. Now you're seeing this as above, to me it is as well, but if you're looking at it from my point of view, it's kind of below it, just the way the fish is, but you'll see what I'm doing in just a second. Don't need a whole lot of it. Come behind it, go all the way through to the nose. And this basically has the same effect as your chrome does on the belly of this. We're just gonna back shoot a little bit of flash and pop to the color. Above my yellow, I wanna come up just a little bit and add in this expired blue using the same stencil, same, same principle. And then just kind of freehand back style up to the top. Go all the way down to the nose, and then because this is such a large canvas, make sure you kind of come underneath, make sure you've got the top of that head. Now we are gonna repaint these, these little pieces and the dorsal fin after we're finished the basic colors. This is an alcohol ink. I don't know if we're focused on that, but Need to make sure that this is completely dry before we do it. But we're gonna run this. Let's see how we think. Which side did I use? This side? Yep, okay. I'm just gonna come back over that. You're fine to talk. I'm just showing them what I'm doing with the tuna. Okay. That's, What's up? That's a wild fucking swim bait. Yeah. But, you know, I threw it in the tank, and the cool thing is that it ballasts pretty well. That's good. Even without hooks. Uh-oh. <laughs> ESPN alert. Fox, actually. Fox. Oh, okay. Um, have you heard from Muka at all this morning? I have not heard from him at all. Okay. Well, I'm trying to contact him. I know okay. Di has answered me. I think they were supposed to be together. You would have, you know, who knows? Above this lighter blue, we're gonna airbrush in the darker blue. This is a wicked deep blue, real good ocean color. And again, we don't need a whole lot, even though it's a lot of real estate. But the biggest thing to remember is that we wanna 
kind of get it as even as possible on both sides. So I'm going to come to the very top of the eye and work it through that way. And then just come back and darken it a little bit more. Try and pay attention where you set the stencil down. And as long as the stencil is pressed against there, you should get a pretty accurate area that you can work with. And then just come above the eye. And then you can freestyle the rest of this stuff in, if I can find my blue. Now it's starting to look like a tuna. We're going to come behind it with some detail black magenta, my favorite, just about of all time, and then just go over the top. Maybe add in just a little depth to some of the sides here. With some detail black magenta, I'm just kind of filling in, adding a little bit more depth with this stencil. Be sure to wipe that down or else it's gonna build up on the back side of this and you don't want that either. This is kind of giving it a little bit more dirt, a little grit. And then just filling that back in. Just darken that up. Now if you notice on the picture you're playing along with, which is somewhere on maybe this side of the screen, not sure, um, but there's a little bit more bruising that goes on down here and you can see some of the scales and scrapes and stuff that it's gotten in its life. Um, see Tuna can fold their, their um, pectoral fins in and it kind of streamlines them as they swim so they're like a torpedo through the water uh, you'll see that line in there as well so we can just grab a random piece of paper and get that in just a little bit So we're going to kind of represent some scaling and I've got a couple of different sizes of these little stencils here. These are modeled stenciling. I might actually go to a new one. I use these on shad a lot and there's not a whole lot left good stuff to use on this particular one because I've just used the mess out of it. But this one, if you kind of go in a line. Just randomly you can kind of get those scales in pretty cool want to get as much accuracy and depth in as you possibly can. Make sure you dab these on whatever 
paper you're using underneath. And then you can kind of do a little darker bruising around the scaling. Don't want to go too crazy with it. You still want to be able to see your your pattern. That's looking pretty decent. And over this detail black magenta, I'm going to come back with just a little bit of a smaller pattern and just kind of randomly hit some spots around the eye. Just want to get these scales in and give a little accuracy as to how the fish looks in the picture. You do the best you can with it. it. Doesn't have to be perfect. If you're happy with it, then that's a good thing. Just to accentuate this dark blue part of here, I'm going to come back one more time with the same stencil. stencil. I'm going to lay it down the same place. Just in a couple of spots and get some dark shading in. Now, maybe hit just a inside of that eye socket one more time and I think we might be good just kind of double check that we got everything we need in here now I'm going to hit the uh, the very outside of this white belly with a little bit of pearl white. I'm going to be using this Mission Models. And this is a pearl starship white. It's really pretty pearl. It's one of the prettiest I've seen. And then I'm going to add a little bit of color shift to the top part of this and then also to the belly in pink. I still want to be able to see everything. So we just want to give it a light coat of this pearl white. Really awesome pearl. It's not iridescent. It's not a color shift. It's just a pearl white. But it's a little bit less opaque and more translucent, which I like on something like this because I can still see the chrome underneath of it. And I can still see all of the colors underneath of it. It just want a little bit of flash. And I think that's just the thing to do it. Now, next up, we've got this Vallejo color shifter. This is a red gold, but it's like just super pink. Don't need much. I'm just going to bring this up on the back end of this by the tail. And I'm just going to kind of give it a couple of lines and stripe it down the front. That's it. Now as I turn this one more time to add in the other color shifter we're going to use, I'm going to try and lay that down the way I had it just to try and keep it in frame for you guys. So the last color shift that I'm going to throw on here is also a Vallejo color. It's this electric blue intense violet. Works really, really well for a fish like this. 
and you're just gonna go down the top of this. Now, you probably won't be able to see a whole lot on that until the end of the video when everything is set and I'm showing off the, uh, the reveal, the end of this pattern. We need to go back and do the dorsal fin and these fin points on the top and bottom. On this fish, they're yellow. So we need to make this white again, but we don't wanna screw up the top of the pattern. Um, it's not always the easiest thing to do, but you can pull it off. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of paper a list at least it would have been a list this was from Jason Carroll and I'm just gonna bring this to the back of the fish and then aim straight down and be very careful and it's okay if it's not the full thing I mean you, you want to do the very best you can but you also don't want overspray either. So just, just do the best you can. And then come down the back of the fish, do the same thing. Very low pressure, very, very low pressure. And just quick bursts. And try not to get it on the paint itself. Now you can come off of that once you've got the, the very bottom of it done and just grab the tips and then do the same thing down here. I'm going to aim away from the fish. It's not as critical on the belly because the belly is a lot lighter. So you just want to hit that. We're going to turn it yellow. We're going to go back to our ochre yellow. We just need a couple of drops. We really don't need a whole lot at all on this. And then we're just going to very lightly and straight down. Don't push in towards the body of the fish at all. Then the same thing on the belly. There we go. Now we're going to add just a little bit of depth on one side of it and kind of shoot some black against here because on the, on the picture you can see that there is some black in there. Got some black loaded back in the cup. Gonna hit it from the side. There we go. Mm, yeah, we'll do this side too, but I gotta flip the fish so I can come at it from the right angle from where my airbrush is. Because we want it to come down this side. So this is a little trickier because I don't want to hit the belly of the fish. Probably wouldn't be too bad, but still don't want to do it. There we go. Now we have a tuna. Pretty cool. This is one complete side of the tuna. The only thing that's missing is the eyes and thank God he sent these because I don't have anything that's quite that big. I was excited. I've been trying to use these for a very long time and they're awesome eyes. I think I got these off of Amazon too. Don't do a whole lot of saltwater builds, but these are just awesome. They're just not quite big enough. So thank you, Backwater, for sending along those eyes as well. So we're gonna put them on. Hopefully my hat's not like over the whole thing. Apologies if this will be fun in post-production. 
with any luck, it's, uh, it's not that way. But our eye is on, I'm getting happy. And this is one complete side of a tuna. This is one big fish. I can't say it's the biggest fish I've ever done to date because I did a bunch of replicas for Ketchco for their stores, the brick and mortar stuff. But this is definitely one of the coolest fish I've done. Hope you're happy with it, Bill. I had a blast painting it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.